Good morning YouTube. It's been a while since I posted a video. Things have got kind of hectic around here, but I finally got some progress made on the, uh, the ham shack and getting some antennas and some radio equipment moved. Uh, right now we're looking at my uh, antenna where I moved it. Um, it's at the corner behind that uh, loquat tree is where the ham shack is. It's at the corner. Uh, it's about 25 feet up in the air, inverted V dipole. Um, the big square insulator in the middle will hold five elements for a fan dipole, multi-element uh, multi fan dipole. Um, it's just got one element on it right now for 40 meters. Um, directly below that is a smaller insulator uh, for an inverted V dipole for 11 meters uh, that my son uses with his CB. And then above that is a J-pole made out of one eighth soft copper tubing um, like you would typically see for uh, well for like an oil pressure gauge in, uh, in a vehicle um, the older gauges before they come out with the poly tubing they used to run copper and that's exactly what that is it's one eighth soft drawn copper tubing and it's in a j-pole configuration that I got plans uh, offline for, um, and I just kind of bent it up, welded on a, or soldered on a connector, and uh, put it in the PVC pipe to add some support because it is soft drawn copper and it is very, very flexible. Uh, the wind will blow it right over. So it's got a PVC pipe support and it works amazingly well. Very, very low SWR on uh, the two meter band. Uh, it works very well on the 440 uh, 70 centimeter band as well um, So I was very pleased with the way it turned out. It's fed with coax. Uh, all of my antennas are fed with coax uh, We're gonna change that though. We're gonna add some ladder line to feed the dipoles uh, here shortly uh, When funds allow so let's go inside and take a look at the radios All right, so now we're inside take a look at uh, some of the radios and equipment that we've got this is uh, basically the uh, this is the HF setup uh, got a MFJ uh, 962 tuner and got the uh, ICOM the uh, IC730 uh, Astron power supply um, got a little weather station uh, from uh, lacrosse um, it's not really a weather station it's basically a thermometer um, but it has a clock and an external temperature sensor on it and uh, that's what I use uh, as a clock in my station and uh, also it tells me how hot it's getting in here because this is a non-conditioned space in fact right there behind the uh, Golden Eagle is where an AC unit is supposed to go supposed to be plugged in the, that outlet you can see behind the antenna coax is coming in uh, but we haven't got that far yet so um, all this uh, set up oh, that's uh, actually an old sewing desk it used to have a sewing machine in it but it doesn't anymore and uh, on top of the tuners my Kenwood TM281 2 meter rig uh, and then above that um, this is a shelving unit that I took out of my son's room when we got done uh, when we started painting the walls in there it, it was hanging up uh, right up under the ceiling in its current configuration with another there was another divider in it but I put it up when that room was actually a nursery when um, we first moved in our house when my youngest son was uh, well the day we the day we moved in was the day we found out we were expecting so and uh, he's almost seven years old now so it's been hanging up in there for seven years and we finally redid his room to make it a little boy's room instead of a baby's room and uh, this had to come down so I repurposed it and now it's holding my son's uh, SBE Trinidad 23 channels uh, CB as well as the um, uh, Johnson transceiver tester that we're, we're kind of using it as a SWR meter and a modulation monitor and uh, RF power because it tests is, it, it's a pretty good little tester it does quite a quite a range of things for the um, 11 meter CB band and it was cheap too the first thing I ever bought 
um, when I started getting back into radios. Uh, bought it on eBay, paid 12 bucks for it, and uh, put two new batteries in it and it went right to work. It's also a field strength uh, tester as well, so you can uh, take it out and uh, unhook it, take it out in the field and have someone to, uh, to key up and you can kind of tell where your RF pattern goes uh, from your antenna. But anyways, uh, he's got the Golden Eagle uh, D104 mic with his CB. Um, above it's a little Lafayette uh, SWR power meter that works on anything from... Uh, I think it goes from... I think it goes from 3 megahertz all the way to 150 megahertz, if I remember correctly, according to the paperwork. Um, the accuracy, though, may be a little off. The SWR is, is accurate because you adjust the full scale on the power and then you read your SWR, but the power has to be calibrated by the little knob in the center. Let's get a little closer. Uh, the little knob in the center, you have to calibrate it for the frequency that you're transmitting on. And the calibration settings in the paperwork is is vague. It's like 3 megahertz, uh, 7 megahertz, 14, 21, 28, and then like 150. So uh, the accuracy of the RF power may be off when you're trying to read it, but the SWR works great. Um, but we use it quite regularly, or I do anyways. Of course, my HF rig's running through the tuner. Um, you can see here, it's a 962. It's not a letter series, so it's one of the first kilowatt <clears throat> series tuners. Bought it off of eBay, 68 bucks. Come in, oh, it was in... <sighs> the guy said it was working and tuning for him. Um, I got it. The transmitter matching um, capacitor uh, had broken loose on the inside. The screws had came out. Um, the antenna matching capacitor was loose. The knob was <clears throat> bent. The shaft that goes in from the knob to the capacitor was bent. Um, the meter switch was, the knob would just spin around and around and around on it. Uh, it, it was a mess. Took the top off. Somebody had cobbled in a bunch of different wires with it's like four inline glass fuses and I cannot for the life of me understand what they were trying to do and the uh, <clears throat> the MFJ schematic doesn't show that anywhere that I can see so I took them out and I fixed the capacitors and got everything you know working and it actually does work um, it, it works pretty good um, there may be some more adjustments I have to make to it because it doesn't it doesn't seem as though the inductor uh, is providing variable inductance on all of the settings. Once you get above, um, I think it's D. Um, I can't tell that it's picking picking up or losing any inductance, but I haven't tested it fully either. That's just me trying to tune my 40 meter for a couple different bands so we'll check it out and see um anyways that's my operating station that's where i do most of my operating i do have two hts that go with me in the truck one's a dmr type radio it's a baofeng uh, dm1701 um i just got it trying to learn how to get the DMR programmed into it. I think I've got a code plug built for it, but there's not a DMR repeater close enough to me to try it out. Uh, we used to have one that was about 12 miles, <clears throat> but they took it down and moved it to a city that's about 40 miles away because their DMR repeater went down. And um, it, it, it's a two... It's a, the repeater that was close to me belongs to a guy who's actually in several different um, Aries clubs in our area because we don't really have a amateur radio only club or not only but we don't have just a general amateur radio club in this area we have amateur radio uh, Aries clubs because apparently everybody that's in amateur radio also has to be an Aries but 
it's something I'm interested in, but not, you know, I'm not getting all excited over it. <laughs> I'll get there when I can. Right now, I don't have time for it because there's some, they, they do require you to be available <clears throat> pretty much 24-7 and attend meetings. And yeah, my work schedule just won't allow that. So uh, moving on around inside this shack, it is very tiny. It is a 12 by 15 room. Let's just oh, see that right there. Oscilloscope. Tektronics. Uh, psh, not Tektronics. Huh. Heath Kit. Heath Kit. Heath Kit. Oscilloscope. <clears throat> Another eBay purchase. Cheap as dirt. But it doesn't have a case. Yeah, that's why it's got a cardboard box around it. Um, it's a uh, 4105 oscilloscope. It works. Um, in fact, I've got an RCA uh, switch for it to make it a dual channel. And it all works. And I've got the cables and connectors. And, I mean, everything, you know, seems to be correct on it. It probably needs a good calibration. But um, I think I paid 40 bucks for it on eBay. But... The listing didn't ever specify that it had no case. And after I got it in, um, seeing no case, I contacted the guy. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in the listing. There's no case. But it wasn't because I went back and looked. Anyways, one of these days, I'll find a junk one on eBay and buy it for the case. So, Or at a swap meet or somewhere. But um, I still got a bunch of stuff. There's the, that's the RCA switch for it. There's a Heathkit um, monitor scope for a HF station, um, voltage calibrator off of eBay. Um, there's signal generator down there. So anyways, and you can see this is all the stuff that used to be in the ham shack in the house in the craft room that my wife and I shared that back bedroom. That's now my daughter's bedroom because we had to move the boys into their own rooms. <clears throat> and you can see there is a pile of stuff in here. Um, there's a uh, E-Mood. I believe that's the E-Mood. Um, console radio. Um, there's a, that's a Zenith Transoceanic. <clears throat> um, Holocrafters S120 parts radio. And if you look right down up in here, oh, excuse me, there's a tram, D201. That's my son's. He dug it out of a junk pile that was being thrown away. <clears throat> Literally, it was about to be burned, and he dug it out, the little scavenger. And see on around, I've got a Q meter, another S120 parts radio, because I bought, I got three of these S120s in a package deal off of. And uh, I believe off of eBay again. I buy a lot of stuff off of eBay more than I should, but um, I bought three of them for seventy bucks. The guy said he didn't know if any of them worked, um, and one out of the three was actually ready to go. Um, it does have a little bit of hum to it, and I'm gonna do an upgrade on the capacitor in it, uh, do a cap change on it eventually. But you can see here's the rest of my test equipment that I've slowly been acquiring i've got a precision <clears throat> signal generator i've got an old heath kit signal generator a uh, isolation transform power supplies this is a precision uh, 954 tube tester and it's out of its case because i was trying to get it to work and it is so far not been a success uh, it is so complicated, so complicated, and the wiring in it is so old. I don't know that if I have the current skill set to complete it. So I've been anticipating. There's a um, a guy that offers his services for these precision tube testers that he will refurbish them. Um, but it's about a four hundred dollar service, and right now funds just aren't there so anyways we have a down here in the bottom we have an old tube uh, that's a zenith no that's an rca 
um, FM AM tube radio chassis. I don't remember what the model is on it, but um, anyways, case for the Precision tube tester CB in there. That's a PC 68XL that I'm working on. <clears throat> Run into some problems. Don't know if I'll finish fixing it or not. And down here, some more CB stuff. Uh, uh, parts pack, uh, capacitance, resistance, um, a bunch of junk stuff. Um, there's my little ICOM 2 meter that apparently I blew up. So got to have that fixed there's a unit in another PC 68 that is in good working order and got my ICO vacuum tube voltmeter and then my two shortwave uh, radios that I listen to the Howlcrafters S120 um, works really good um, and then the realistic DX100 that was in the house next to my chair but I brought it in out here so and I've used it I just hook them clip them onto my uh, one of my dipoles and they work great and pick up wonderfully and then a signal tracer and I've got a, uh, a capacitance uh, tester as well um, and it's it's a um, it's an ICO 955 and it only tests the capacitance it doesn't do a leak test which I was when I first bought it I didn't know what I was buying really what I needed to buy and uh, had I known that I might not would have been as quick to purchase it over a a Heath kit or an ICO with a leakage tester because uh, that would have been very helpful in um, testing some capacitors and some of this old equipment but anyways there it is you guys see it uh, if you get motion sick you probably did, shouldn't have watched this video because I move it around a lot I got a new phone I got rid of the uh, iPhone that had the busted screen and the bad camera and the no working mic so hopefully this video is a little bit better it's on I went back to an Android to a Motorola and uh, really like this phone so far so anyways that's it that's where we're at um got a lot more stuff to do um particularly in this area right here gonna be adding a lot of stuff uh reorganizing building some nice shelving units and uh hopefully getting the rest of this room organized and cleaned up where i can actually uh, get in here and do some more work so anyways that's it guys uh, thanks for watching if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, give me a thumbs down. Uh, either way, write me a comment. And let me know what, what you did or did not like. Um, that way I'll know what to, uh, what to look for in the future. Um, not saying I'm going to follow every suggestion, but, you know, improvements can always be made. But, uh. Definitely let me know what you think. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see y'all later.